Good money. A little noodle injury right here. I think it's getting better though. Ah, oh, it's humid outside. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update because I've been kind of jumping around to different cities. So I am back in Texas now. I'm gonna stay here a bit, go to all the different cities, find some new foods to eat. I'm gonna to San Antonio tomorrow for the first time. So that's kind of what I'm doing nowadays. And as things are opening up, I'm gonna to try to figure out what to do next, what to eat next, and just trying to sort my life out a bit more. Also, this is really cool. Look out for this video down the road. So 7-Eleven opened up a new chain of stores called 7-Eleven Evolution. And the first ones are here in Texas. So that's what I'm gonna go check out today. And I haven't really posted a lot on Instagram about where I've been, where I'm at, but the last month or so have been pretty life-changing. And the video you're seeing today is kind of like the, the beginning of all that. And this is my first time back at Disney. So I went to Epcot Center, I think this was over a month ago. It's my first time back in Disney since I was eight years old. And little did I know that day was gonna change my life, well, forever. And I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. Anyway, before going to 7-Eleven, let's grab some breakfast. A big shout out as always to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video and continuing to support this channel. I told you guys before, cereal is one of my obsessions. If I'm at a buffet, even though I'm full, if I see cereal there, I'm getting a bowl of cereal. But as I age, and yes, I am aging, I've been cutting back for years, but the addiction is strong to the point where if I'm going to a grocery store, I'm not walking down a cereal aisle because I don't know if I can resist. Then I came across Magic Spoon. This thing, zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, four grams of net carb, and only 140 calories per serving. And actually tastes good. I told you guys before, usually at dinner when I want to cut back, this is all I eat. Also, it's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and if you're on the keto diet, it's keto-friendly. This one I'm eating is birthday cake, one of their limited time flavors. They have these all the time. They also have their original grape flavors like fruity, frosted, cocoa, peanut butter. This is good. I think my favorite though is definitely peanut butter and cocoa, maybe mixed together. I got Reese's Pieces cereal kind of deal. Anyway, if you want to give this a try and build your own variety box, just go to my link down below. Use my promo code DUMPLING. You're going to get $5 off your order. Also, so what I like about Magic Spoon, they're so confident about their product. If you don't like it for whatever reason, they got a 100% happiness guarantee. Again, don't like it for whatever reason, get your money back. So link down below, promo code Dumpling for $5 off, or just go to magicspoon.com slash dumpling. And now they also ship to Canada. All right, I'm gonna get up and head to the 7-Eleven. So please enjoy my food review of Epcot Center in Florida, the day my life completely changed. Take care. What a nice, beautiful, super hot day in Florida. Let's go to Disney. All right, getting closer to Epcot and emotions I didn't know I had are now bubbling to the surface because last time I, I was here, it was the most memorable trip of my young life because it was the first trip I ever took as a child. It was with a church and we went to Orlando, we went to Magic Kingdom, we went to Epcot. I still remember going into the, the ball. I think there's some future cars in there that I remember seeing and eating around the I feel it. I'm feeling things right now. All right, I'm here. Hot for the sun. And let's get our Disney on. I just had a scare. If you're gonna purchase a Disney ticket, you have to purchase the ticket and you have to select the park, which apparently I didn't do. I just wanna say, first of all, buying the tickets for Disney was probably the most, am I just too old for this? Like, I don't know. But the nice gentleman in the front let us in. And here we are, standing in front of the giant Dorian. That looks like a Dorian, like a metallic door. Anyone else getting hungry right now? Hi. Sorry, I trapped your cousin on a cheese trap last year. First stop, getting some food and my few memories of Epcot is just going around the giant durian and eating at these international food places. So that's what I'm gonna go first and we'll just see what's there. Really don't remember what countries there are, I don't remember what foods there are, but I think I see a Japanese castle. Way over yonder, way over yonder. Here we are and start with Mexico. Tacos, nachos, turtles, margaritas. All right, there's so many people in Mexico. So, um, getting on to the next country, what is this? Oh, Norway. Anna and Elsa. Yeah. I know them. I wish it was frozen right now. Oh, look.
first stop on this world food tour is at the Norway Pavilion where the bakery is open and they have only sweet things. <laughs> this is gonna be kids, when you grow up, you can be like Uncle Mike and just go to Disney and just eat all the sweet stuff you want for breakfast. There's what they call the best cake in the world, the apple pie with caramel sprinkled on top, the chocolate kringla, which is like a like a pastry, but it's shaped like a pretzel. And there's also the school cake. It's all sweet. Pleasures of being an adult, no, no one here to be like, that's too much sweet, Mike. Don't, don't eat that. So. It's not bad. What I like about this actually is the raisins that's on the bottom. That provides a nice little textural diversity. This thing is very, very doughy. It feels kind of light. It's very dense piece of pastry. It's definitely not very airy. And this thing will fill you up. It just kind of tastes like a frosted chocolate syrup doused pieces of bread. And by the way, how it usually works on my channel is that when I'm going around to small businesses, if I don't like something, I'm not even gonna put it in my video because I'm not out to hurt people's businesses. But I will give people really good recommendations on food. Disney, I'm just gonna be brutally honest. If it's good, I'm gonna tell you how good it is. If it's bad, I'm gonna tell you how bad it is. I don't really think Disney's gonna lose out on any business, so uh, that's how it's gonna work here. This is a, I have no idea. It's like a tortilla wrap something. I'm sure, I'm sure it will be sweet though. I'm so confused by this. It just tastes like this giant tortilla. It's thick, it's dense, it's a little salt, and there's some sort of sweet paste on the inside. I keep taking more bites of this thing, hoping there, there's like something like in the middle I'm gonna hit. Oh, this is more cream. There's some sort of whipped cream that kind of wrapped inside this roll. This is the school bread. Oh no, a little Olaf melted in the scorching Florida sun. So the school bread is some kind of banana bread with a sweet creamy filling and it's kind of wrapped in coconut. Super sweet. But the best thing I had so far today. The cream is actually really good. The texture of the bread is delightful. Coconut on the outside, who doesn't love that? And it reminds me of snowflakes. Texture-wise good, flavor, a little too sweet, but all right. This is apparently the, the best cake. It kind of looks like a like a sponge cake. Cream in the middle. Oh, this is all so sweet. Good God. That's really good. Really fluffy, cream is nice. Again, it's gonna be overly sweet. The nice crunch of the almonds is good. So soft and tender though. I don't even know why I got this. It's a rice pudding or something like that with strawberries on top. I'm not really expecting much here. The rice pudding is really dense. Really, really dense. It really is just tasting all the artificial strawberry stuff on top. Only thing I would recommend here is that I had so far, school bread and the cake. Oh, there's the apple pie. So this was their most recommended item. I asked the people and they said, this is really, really, really good. That's actually pretty good. It'd be better if it just came out of the oven and it's a little toasty on the outside. But the apple slices are nice. It tastes more like a like a banana pudding. If you could just, you got 100% get the caramel drizzle on top. Yeah, I would say this is more like a apple bread pudding. Next stop, China. I didn't remember all the different countries being built out so elaborately. This actually looks like like a life-size gate of uh, what a Chinatown gate would look like. Chaoyangmen. Papa cakes, bonbon chicken skewers, homemade crab and cheese wonton. That's a crab rangoon, that's a fancy way to say it. Panda bubble tea, jasmine beer. Wow, kung fu punch. I feel like you just add kung fu in front of everything and be try more Chinese. Let's go take a look inside the gates first. So there are restaurants uh, in these pavilions, obviously. So this place got more like sit down. Oh, grandma's pork belly, that would have been good. These are all closed right now, so I can't really taste that. So I think this is kind of modeled after the Forbidden City in, in Beijing. Okay, then we've got the Lotus Blossom Buffet where there's Mongolian. Okay, Mongolian beef is actually not a Chinese dish, so I'm gonna steer clear of this place. Okay, found this little table. This is kind of like what, what, I, what I'm eating next to here, but it's private. 
I like that, that's all I care about. So I pretty much figured out Epcot world thingy. Basically it's just a country. The architecture is pretty cool. And if you walk around, there's just gift shops and food. So that's basically all it is. So this is called the Papa Cake. It looks like potato pancake with a big strawberry on there and raspberry syrup. This is a chicken skewer. It looks like some spices on there, some sauce. And God, I need something savory. I don't know whether I'm just like craving for something savory so much or my expectation of Disney food has just lowered considerably. This is not too bad. It gives like a two and a half out of five. A lot of sesame paste, which I like. A little bit of spices. Chicken's really tender. Beast the heck out of all the sweet stuff I just ate at the Norwegian Pavilion. I like this much better. This is one big strawberry. Potato pancake with an oversized strawberry in the middle with cabbage and lettuce and raspberry syrup. Definitely nothing traditional. Yet. This is probably the best thing I had today. So the potato pancake, you can actually taste the shrimp and the crab very, very well. The texture is nice, crunchy on the outside, nice and chewy. Everything goes well with the sweet syrup. The strawberry is deliciously fresh and juicy. This is the best thing I had in Epcot so far, and it's in the Chinese pavilion. It's not even Chinese food. I have no idea what this is. I just know this is pretty good. I really feel like my standards for Disney food has definitely lowered. I'm really enjoying this right now. I think at this point, any food that doesn't give me a sugar rush is tasting really good to me. That's good. Get rid of the lettuce and cabbage. That, that does nothing to this for this dish. Disney standards, three and a half out of five. Not bad. Just walked past uh, Germany, and this is uh, this is Venice here. This looks like some typical bratwurst and here's there's, there's restaurants you can go to for pizza or pasta. Come here at the end because I feel like this is uh, somewhere where you just want to kind of sit down and enjoy the meal. Let's go see if there's other places that sell stuff you can just grab on the go. I have officially <laughs> dropped stuff on myself. Ah, and welcome to America. So basically America is Texas. There's barbecues and the Colonel's Mansion. This is so elaborate. Look at Japan. You got shrines. You got a giant castle in the background. This is probably the most elaborate one. It does make me miss Japan. It does have that feeling. Katsua Grill, where you have noodles and sushi, chicken wings. I never thought I'd be eating ramen and sushi in Disney, but here I am. If you don't see this video, this will probably be why. And if this matcha drink is any indication of the food, this will probably be the worst ramen I've ever had in my life. So the ramen, oh my gosh. Oh man, this is already not looking so good. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but this is already looking like what you see when you're driving outside of Las Vegas, the vast dry desert. There is just zero moisture here in the chashu. Some ginger Chinese broccoli. First time I've ever seen that in ramen, corn, scallions, and here we go. This smells, <laughs> again, it smells like that matcha drink tastes. Nothing at all. The positives. The texture is really nice. Beautifully al dente. I gotta say, texture is great, but at this point, it just kind of tastes like salty noodles. Broth is very, <laughs> broth is very, what's the opposite of what you have to pay to stay at a beautiful Disney suite around here? You know, the opposite of rich would be this. It's not rich. This wouldn't be able to get into Disney. I don't know how I got into Disney because no, like, mm mm. I need a sip of this very non-rich broth to wash down the driest piece of trash I've ever had. Yeah, this is a, a two out of five bowl of ramen. Did I expect it to be good? No. Did I expect it to be this bad? No. Yuzu chicken wings. I really like that. This is really good. Hmm. 
Good yuzu flavor, a lot of umami in this, very saucy, the chicken is tender, flavor is steeped all the way through, nice aroma from the sesame, four out of five. Really, flavor is nice, texture is nice. Don't hate this. Now let's see about the sushi. <laughs> I really don't think they can mess this up very much. I mean, it's a spicy roll. I'm not really a sushi expert anyway, so what do I know? My rice is horrible. Ingredients is good. The, the spicy tuna is actually pretty good. Crunchy veg is nice. My rice is horrible. I think a little way too sticky. No flavor at all. Mm. Overall, I think the Japan Pavilion, give that a three out of five. So if you're ever in the Japan Pavilion, do not recommend the ramen. Do recommend the chicken wings. Unless you're just in the mood for green color water, don't get this. The Japan Pavilion has actually a lot of restaurants. I count three so far. This is the third place we can get food where you can get frushi, fru sushi. We're gonna stay the heck away from that. This just looks like cold shrimp and crab with a drop of green, whatever the heck it is on top. This is interesting though, soy glazed pork shake pork shank with little lotus crisp with truffle mashed potatoes let's try that out i am a little afraid because this is the first food line i've been a part of that has no line maybe that means something i don't know thank you sir Take care. thank you uh, no problem. it's basically the size of a, a quarter of a popsicle oh it is really tender though i was kind of trying to scoop mashed potatoes up with this and it kind of fell apart You know, Florida is kind of known to be humid and wet. Sad it didn't translate to the food. There's a good reason why there's no line there. This is probably the driest thing I had today. And this morning I had a piece of a cracker. Also the frushi, I saw it sitting there. I saw several flies land on it. Don't recommend anything from that little booth. What is happening here? to the green team. First stage separation and manual control. Loading flight plan. Taking a little break from food to fly a space shuttle. First I gotta COVID fly this. Commander, initiate first stage separation. Now. Engaged. Earth orbit. Velocity, 15,000. It's pretty cool. Mission space race, that's what I was just on. It's pretty cool. But the buttons and joystick, you didn't actually have to push anything or use the joystick at all. Oof, now I kind of feel my ramen coming up. pretty cool right I don't know if this is actually part of the ride but you can actually smell the grass when you're flying over the elephants and stuff recommend it I'm at the uh, Canada area and this is the International Flower and Garden Festival special menu so lemon poached lobster salad citrus braised crispy pork belly that looks good. Let's go try it. It's towards the evening now, so this is pretty much dinner time. Might have struck gold, finally. Check this out. Lobster salad, which is just tiny bits of lobster, but this might be good. Okay, this is the pork belly over a puree. Kind of toasty on the outside, super juicy and tender looking. This might be the best food I've encountered today. This lobster salad is kind of sad, honestly. It's the smallest piece of lobster in existence. It's actually pretty good. Really refreshing. I like the crispy, what is this? I think it's like a crispy fig. It's a crispy fig. It's really good actually. Sauce is good, it's creamy. This is actually a very nice salad. It's cucumbers on the bottom. It's just not worth, I think the $7 price tag for three tiny pieces of lobster, but this is good.
All right, it's a pumpkin puree. Flavor is delicious. The fatty parts are nice and melty. I think the problem with what I just ate is that it's been left out too long. I think if this just came out of the cooker, it would have been really, really good. But now, since it's been sitting, I don't know, in their little, maybe under some kind of lamp or whatever, certain parts of the meat has gone super dry. Otherwise, the flavor is good. The puree is absolutely delicious. I think the lobster salad, flavor, I give it a four out of five. Value, I give it a two out of five. This thing, flavor, I give it out of a four out of five. The current state that it's in, about a two and a half out of five. Still much better than a lot of the stuff I had this morning. In this area, it's like the food's getting a little more fancy schmancy. I feel like I, I stepped into the Upper East Side of Epcot here. But Canada is nearby, so I think I need some poutine. Thank you. I'm kind of scared when things look really good because they often been disappointing. This hot dog, this is a spicy hot dog. It looks like a really decent looking hot dog with pineapple chutney and little, what looks like banana chips on top. And then this berry cake, looks like a good berry cake. Honestly, wow. This is actually pretty good. The world is burning up from the heat. Can't believe something from Disney is actually hurting me besides, you know, the remake of The Lion King. The chutney is good, the chips provides a nice texture. The sausage though, that's one spicy sausage. And the bun is really pillowy and nice. Usually I'm not a fan of hot dogs. That's actually a really good hot dog. That's really good. It actually tastes like something I would get from a bakery. The cake is crumbly. The berry sauce is giving it a very Asian compliment, not very sweet. More tart than anything else. This whole thing works. I feel like as the day go on, either I'm just getting more and more tired and hungry, or the food is getting better. All right, now, let me see if I can find that poutine. I was looking for it. I got distracted by this whole spicy hot dog thing. I saw spicy, I saw hot dog, kind of lost my mind a little bit. But now, let's go get that poutine. So this is the Canada Pavilion, but I can't find the poutine. I don't know why I'm so stuck on this. I really want the poutine. Oh, you know why? Because some woman walked past me and she's like, the poutine's good. Now that voice is repeatedly sounding in my head. Okay, so I found the poutine. It's in here. Unfortunately, it's dining only. So I'm gonna have to go to Canada if I want some good poutine. By the way, there's so many little animals here. I saw a rabbit, a bunch of squirrels. I'm just saying, if I was a little animal just wandering around the world, I would want to live in Disney. You know, I got my bigger cousin who basically runs this place. If I was a mouse, rabbits, I don't think Disney had many famous rabbits. Then I probably want to go to Looney Tunes. Back at the Moroccan Pavilion again. So this is a place I wanted to try some food at. And it's about, I think right now, 7.30ish? Yeah, 7.30. So it's almost sunset. Been here all day. This might be the last food I'm gonna get before just going off and doing some more rides and walking around and actually checking out some souvenirs. I wanna get something. This is my first time back in Epcot in so long. I just wanna grab something. So the Moroccan menu, seafood couscous, shakshuka, lemon, magdalena cake. So this is the three dishes I got. This is the uh, seafood couscous, the cake, I forgot what it is, with figs on top. This looks actually really good. And the shakshuka. So I looked at the seafood thing and I, I asked them, I'm like, can I get a fresh one? And they're like, this is fresh, This we just made that. If that is fresh, I'm the Asian Mickey Mouse because this does not look all that fresh at all. Mussels, shrimp, couscous. A little less salt, this would actually be perfect. Texture is fantastic, couscous is delicious, soaked up by that great seafood flavor. It's just way too salty. This is so salty. I mean, the couscous is delicious, the seafood is good. It's citrusy, it's got tons of good spices, it's got olives in here, tomatoes. A little spicy, a little sweet, a little smoky. Flavor profile is fantastic. 10% less salt, this would be perfect. I mean, it's burning me in my throat right now. And it's the good type of pain that you love, shakshuka. Okay, this is this might be the saddest shakshuka I've ever seen in my life. Eggs are runny. This is not bad. Eggs are actually perfectly cooked. Beans are nice, the spices are great. Okay, the Moroccan Pavilion might be my favorite place today. Fresh herbs on top is a nice touch too. This is so good. 
the fig on top. So good. The cake, this thing is denser than Peter Griffin. I think the couscous, a little less salt. Give that a four out of five. Shakshuka, 3.5 out of five. This, the top part, four out of five. Bottom part, 1.5 out of five. Do not recommend the dessert. Couscous is really good. I'm rating everything like on a, on a Disney scale. I feel like I'm giving Disney a scale. If you rate it like, like, like any other food, none of the stuff I ate today was really good except maybe the lobster, crumple cake, the pork belly, maybe. Those things are stuff that you would order in a restaurant and be okay with. The rest of the stuff is very Disney foodish. So is it terrible? Sometimes. Is it okay? Most of the time, is it great? Rarely. Obviously, I didn't go to all the pavilions today. I, I went to as many as my stomach could muster. So now, I'm just gonna walk around, uh, maybe go on a couple more rides, kind of enjoy my time here in Epcot without without worrying about the food. If I see some food crossing my path that looks really interesting, I'm gonna taste it. Otherwise, let's go enjoy the park. Last ride inside the big giant Dorian. Well, that's it. This ride was a lot less exhilarating than I remembered it. I remember the first time I was here, again, I was eight years old. I get to the end and there would be these crazy looking futuristic cars. And I was like, the future is gonna be so cool. And here we are, no flying cars just yet. This time, even though, you know, I'm a lot older, still feel some of those things. Fun day here in Epcot. Too bad I couldn't get really get into the Magic Kingdom or anything, but I guess there'll be another trip to Orlando in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for watching until we eat again. See you later.